their strategy paid off. Before long, the homunculi wrath and gluttony appeared. Oh yeah, I remember. However, <laughs> I remember the cliffhanger. She's alright though. She's fine. Can I eat her now? Just make it quick. <laughs> nice, we get to see some Ling in action. Not fun. Please stay with me. If you thought you could escape from me that easily, I'm afraid you'll find your surely mistaken. Damn, the fact that Lincoln hold his own against Bradley is insane. All this jumping around, he's trying to stay in my blind spot. Smart. Everyone's so smart. <laughs> Gluttony can really move too. Excellent. We should have some privacy in here. <laughs> so positive. You might stand a fair chance of getting away if you'd only abandoned the injured girl because she's just excess baggage at this point. A ruler's duty is to his people. Without them, he is no king at all. King Bradley, you're no true king. Don't you understand that there are no true kings in this world? <laughs> nice try. But your flash bomb didn't succeed in blinding this eye. Episode 22, Backs in the Distance. Damn, this is, that was an insane opening. I've been kind of waiting and watching Ling, because he emerged as a character and he seemed somewhat harmless. He's sort of just been lingering around. I've been waiting for him to show his true abilities. I'm kind of surprised though that Bradley is revealing himself here, even if it's just to Ling. He's been so careful and so cautious for so long. It seems like a bold move. One thing I love about Bradley that I think is exemplified really well in this scene, his sin is wrath, right? But he's always so cool and collected and he sounds charming and positive no matter what. We won't be away too long. You be a good little girl, okay? Take care of things while we're gone. It always blows my mind how even in anime, you can see the resemblance from both the mother and the father. Like, Winry looks like a cross between the two of them. Watching Mr. Hughes leave that day was like the last time I saw Mom and Dad. Just their backs as they walked away. You'll come and visit once in a while, won't you? After all, we wouldn't want him to get lonesome here. Yes, of course I will. Uh yeah, I feel like she has a bond with the daughter, too. They have a lot in common, sadly. I hear the Elrics are wreaking havoc. What, again? The MPs have been running around like crazy. They really did their job, stirring things up. What is the military waiting for? No, not again, please. But I feel like she's gonna make things worse by showing up. Well, <laughs> there he is. I have to buy us some time. Scar, you say you believe that alchemists have defied God. Isn't that hypocritical? You use alchemy just like we do. Wow. It's balance. Where there are creators, there must be a destroyer. That's a lie. You're using the name of your God to justify murder. Revenge is all you care about. I'll cut into the bone here. You two saw that abomination as well, did you? Alchemy created that tragic creature. So, that's the science you would spend your lives following? <laughs> that chimera was made because a man thought he could create when creation is the province of God alone. <laughs> Foolish as you are, you must still have known that chimera could never have returned to her human state. <laughs> we didn't want to think about it. We knew there was no hope. So we did nothing. Wow. It's a really great choice having both Scar and the brothers have encountered Nina in that form. Because it does exemplify the extremes of Ed's belief, at least early in the show, where he thought science was everything, alchemy was everything. And it does give credit to Scar's belief that alchemy has gone too far, or that people take it too far. And that is going to hit a sore spot for Ed and Al because they didn't know what to do. I mean, what do you do in that situation? There is no clear answer. Even if it's not their fault that any of that happened, it does force them to sort of look at a blind spot they had, and a moment where they were helpless and didn't have answers. I'm worried for Winry. That doesn't make what you're doing right, and we can't let you continue. Exactly. I love how they're just having this conversation. Do you remember two Amestrian doctors named Rockbell? 
The timing. The order came down to end the uprising and exterminate Ishval, but that didn't stop them. They kept right on helping your people. Those doctors saved your life, and you killed them! What are you talking about, Ed? Winry, I... You mean he's the man who killed them? Oof. They helped save you. And you killed them. <laughs> Why did you? They were my mom and dad. What did they ever do to you? They were doctors. Give me back my mom and dad, you monster! What effect is it going to have on Scar? Winry, hold on. Is she reaching for the gun? She is. Don't do this. Winry! I know the animosity you feel, but your vengeance will only sow the seeds of further violence. What you're doing is senseless revenge, and it's feeding a fruitless cycle of death. You must end this cycle once and for all. Full Metal Whoa. Alchemist. Whoa. That is a crazy card. Full Metal Alchemist. I love the flashback to his teacher's words. Scar's been set up really well, so we know that he's a human being, and he's not unreasonable. He's just extremely motivated by anger. There are redeeming qualities, so this makes this so interesting to see how it's going to play out. It's easy to imagine this having a big effect on Scar, especially to face Winry like this, and to see his teacher's words sort of play out in real time. You have the right. Shooting me would be justified. Brother! Brother! Listen, the armed forces have almost arrived! What are those tattoos for? Oh, these things? The basis of alchemy is understanding, deconstruction, and reconstruction. My right arm deconstructs, my left arm reconstructs. Your brother is the only one who can stand against the state alchemists. If he can match their power with his, he could find a way to annihilate the military. The threat to us would be ended. Do you see this, brother? This is the science that you would spend your life following? You may think it's for the greater good, that it could help our people. You don't even see the evil you're creating! This is the moment that Scar gets on the circle of violence. It's also a nice touch having the brother have both arms, one for destruction, one for creation, and Scar having only the one for destruction. This is pretty horrible. So this is your alchemy, brother? <laughs> Damn. You will survive. Oh, it's him. Get back! Stay with me. Don't you die. Oh no, is he going to sacrifice himself? Where's my brother's arm? Where is it? Father. Mother. Wow, he lost everybody. Don't die. I won't let you. Wow, so he gave his own life to save Scar? Any one of those things would have explained why Scar is so bitter about alchemy. But all of those things together is insane. What happened? Why did you protect me? Brother? Anyone who can move on their own, go now! He's awake! Oh no. You aren't well enough to move around on your own yet. The blue eyes. Brother's tattoos. You're alive. So it's actually his brother's arm. What is going on here? <laughs> Sedatives! There aren't any more! We used them all up! <laughs> State alchemists. A mystery ends. You will pay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
hurts to watch. That last shot was really beautiful, him climbing the tree, looking over the city, music. I think as blind to his own motivations as Scar is, as much as he wants revenge, and as much as he feels like that's justified or has found reasons to justify it, I feel like for someone like Scar, there's no escaping the actual feeling of guilt about what he actually did to Windry's parents. Because there's no way to rationalize killing the doctors that are trying to help you, even for someone like Scar who has a lot of blood on his hands. He must have been carrying that with him this whole time. And what's incredible about it is Scar goes from understanding intuitively that doing alchemy to destroy alchemy is going to lead to more problems than it solves. It's not a solution. But due to the course of events, he gets caught in that circle anyway. He becomes the very evil that he's afraid of. Go on, shoot. Don't do it, Winry. Put down the gun! You know you don't want to do this! Winry! Shoot, girl. But no, the moment you pull the trigger, there's no going back. You will be my enemy. Scar! If you think I'll let you hurt one hair on her head! Will you kill me? And be fine with me. Until one of us dies, boy, this chain of hatred will continue. But don't ever forget! Don't ever forget it was the Amestrians who first pulled the trigger during the Civil War! It was your people! One of the bravest choices I think this story makes, it makes from the very beginning, which is having Ed be a part of this whole complex, the whole military thing. It's such a complex thing because Ed wasn't directly involved in the war, but there's somehow no escaping that link. And it makes Scar correct. It was Ed's people, even if it's not Ed directly, that launched this whole thing. At least that's as far back as we know in the story. Winry! <laughs> if you can't shoot, then do as the boy told you. You're in my way! Winry can't shoot. Don't shoot! Get uh. My brother. Something's getting through. Is the cat okay? Oh, and you idiot! What are you doing? Both of you will get killed. Hurry and get Winry somewhere safe! I couldn't shoot. That's a good thing. I tried to kill you and help too, Ed. But I couldn't. Why not? Remember in Rush Valley, you delivered that baby. You saved two lives. And you gave me an arm. And a leg. To replace the ones I've lost. It's your hands aren't meant to kill. They're meant to give life. That's why. You think you're getting an action episode. <laughs> and it even starts out that way, with Ling and Bradley. And then you just get tragedy on, on multiple fronts. You get the horrible backstory of Scar and the war, and you get poor Winry. Like, to see her suffer like that hurts extra bad because she's such a good person. It was pretty obvious to me that she wouldn't shoot, but nevertheless, it's a huge relief, and I think it was done really well. Like, that conversation that Ed had with her was perfect. That's exactly it. Like, the metaphor he used about her delivering life and that's what she's destined to do. That's a bigger thing than just her actions. That's the point, right? That's the tragedy of Scar is that he's stuck on that loop. Winry is not. Winry is, is free to do good things. And Scar is right. Scar is right that that choice would have changed things forever. Because tragedy is something that happens. There's no way to eradicate evil in the world. And there's nothing you can do to eliminate evil or reduce evil by adding to it. I think at least. And there's a bigger cost, I think, to going down the path of, of vengeance or hatred or engaging in the same tactics as someone who means you harm, which is a personal cost because there's something that has like infinite value that you can't get back which is just the knowledge of self and knowledge of your own actions and like having done things that are good or and pure there's nothing that can buy that and there's nothing that can undo bad actions like for example scar will always have that weight on his shoulders of what he did to winry's parents winry although she's experienced tragedy she's blessed that she is pure enough to not have had anything that she's done like that so as much as she's going to suffer over the events in her life there's a suffering she can avoid by knowing in her heart that she's done her best and has hasn't contributed to that 
kind of violence or hatred. And I think that's a really important concept, like even outside of this setting, like war and whatever, you know, just in daily life, the knowledge of acting according to your own principles and not resorting to things that weaken you or make you regretful about the way you've acted, you know? And like the past can't be undone, but I feel like it's a positive message for the future. And I think that looking at it optimistically, I think the, the negative things that we do can at least be used as, as learning experiences and motivation to not try to perpetuate that in the future. For me, that's so important. It's so valuable to try to live that way, like living, living in accordance to some kind of deeper value with the goal of being able to look at yourself and respect yourself, you know, and know that for the most part you acted with integrity. It's something so precious and I feel like it's not, it's not something that we talk about that much. Like I think like one really good goal to have is just being able to, you know, look yourself in the mirror and see someone good and pure. You know, I think you can't put a price on that. And there's almost few things worth that. Even if there are like terrible events in our lives, like that's something that can't be taken away from us. That's something like directly in our control. And I think that's a, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And Winry is a really good representation of that. And she has been so far. Like she's always a source of hope and positivity and care and kindness, you know? And so it's a relief that she's holding on to that, you know, with help from Ed and Al. Ed is exactly right about his assessment about her. You know, like she's important. Like you need people like that in a world like this. As much as we understand her desire to kill Scar, you know, for her to reduce herself to that would have been tragic. She would have become in some ways the same as a lot of the other characters who don't really have any scruples. Like King Bradley saying, there are no true kings, right? That was a very timely comment because Winry is a queen. She is that kind of person. She's the counterforce, and I, like without that, we have nothing. It's a spectacular episode. It's heartbreaking, but it's really well done. It's well written. Art is beautiful. The music is beautiful. It's very touching. You gotta imagine this had some effect on Scar, right? Like I feel like there was a crack that formed in his demeanor. He wasn't able to kill Ed. He's not totally lost. It's tough to redeem his character, but it's nice to see that the humanity exists, that he can still reflect. There are still things he cares about beyond just vengeance and violence and anger. So yeah, really fantastic episode. You know, more knife twisting, but in, in the best possible way. That's all for now. I'll see you guys for the next episode. Thank you.